Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by digging. I'm gonna pause this really fast because this is actually a it's like a show match that's kind of sponsored by Team Think Quick and Esports Fund. Esports Fund is matching the funds. I actually should put the actually it was asked not to put the logo up, but that's okay because it was like ah, I don't trouble with it. This is the map Terraform, and we're going to see it kind of demonstrated and kind of a show match between there were several games played between Machine Dreamer. This is one of the random ones that was chosen. And just to give a quick, I'll talk about the players as we get rolling in. I think most people who are watching are familiar with this, but it's got kind of the Lurker Egg here, leading to the natural. This is very BSL, what was the map? BSL Aid Runner? That might be the map. Uh, at the esque, I might be wrong on that. Leading up to the naturals, you can, and I really like, I like the doodads they have. Kind of, does kind of make you think of a, an actual terraforming on a planet, growing the a desert wasteland into a beautiful lush paradise. Mineral only here is the nearest third base, which is a bit enclave, but there, this is high ground that's out there. This is the nearest gas at the ninth, yeah, nine o'clock here, it's, uh, mirrored at three. This is, I believe, a four player map, so upper left is also. So, point being, this is a lot of mineral map. Uh, in the middle, you can see there it kind of has a interior area which is down. Uh, so there can be superior engagement points if you, you know, manage to sneak up here, engage your opponent in more of a defensive position. But yeah, we'll see how it ends up playing out. This is part of, I believe, the Mat New Worlds Map Maker Contest and is being played for balance. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off... No, that, not the mini-map. <laughs> Give me a second to figure out which one it is. I have trouble remembering. Diplomacy menu, remove map, and we'll dive right into the commentary get going. Dreamer is starting the upper right hand corner as the green Protoss. Bottom left hand corner we have Machine as the black Zerg. And again this is on Terraform. I wanted to highlight these two players because first of all they're about equivalent MMR. They're both really top players. Ash Dreamer of course taking second in Hasu League. Machine has been playing fairly well recently and is in similar MR, MMR ranks and also it's PvZ instead of PvP so I wanted to do that. Also I wanted to announce for the people who have been enjoying the one upload a day sort of thing, what I'm gonna do, just because I have a, I have a huge backlog, I've, if it if it took me, if I was just doing one a day, I would have actually two weeks more of games to upload, and there's actually been questions amongst uh, at least patrons who are saying, why aren't you just uploading them all? I guess I have a little bit of a patron split here. Let me know if you guys prefer it. I think I might switch to just uploading all the games in a couple days and not notifying for every single game and just notifying for one because I realized where I could do that notification and playing it from there and see how it goes. But So I'll try uploading all the videos. This is kind of the announcement that I'm doing that so you're not just, ah, oh, what happened? And then, or you can go in the backlog and see what happened to the rest of BSL. But also the other reason is to finish out the rest of BSL Season 11 fairly quick because BSL Season 12 is underway and I want to go ahead and hop on and do that. We do have a pylon here. And I think this is a fairly sealable natural expansion. It looks like a gateway and a forge would do it right on the front door. And I'm almost wondering if that's what we're going to see from Ash Dreamer. I don't, this is where my eyes are not perfect in the Brood War space, but I'm, I'm going to look at this. It's actually, it, it's going to be interesting. This looks like a very sealable front door. So there's the forge along that corner, which suggests we're going to see Nexus first. Machine has gone ahead and opened up with a 12 hatch, which is pretty typical for his style. He tends to be, or actually, sorry, 11 hatch. He tends to be more of a, an economic player little bit more of the he likes overwhelming his opponents by kind of getting those mid I would say like mid late late mid game he likes playing passively towards the start is what I would say getting the spawning pool to follow on 11 as well he likes playing a little bit yeah more passively getting an early economic lead and then just overwhelming his opponents he's very good with the swarming and getting the hotkeys and large army movement in particular dreamer we've seen of course in Hasu League and I like this from Dreamer, he saw that there was a hatch opening first. He's going to go ahead and plop that Nexus down as a result. Also, knowing that Machine was scouting, I think he got a good look at that scout as it moved out of the base as well. Machine scouting to the right. This looks like it's a little bit of a large map as well. This is a long distance scout to come into this base. So Dreamer is going to get an advantage where he's going to be able to basically do a lot of, well, get a little bit of an economic leap by putting this Nexus down before needing to put down that gate or even a cannon. It might even be able to skip cannon altogether depending on what machine's up to just because of the sheer distance on this map. This looks huge in that regard. Yeah, we're seeing a pylon out in the main uh, as well. Machine has a few Zerglings being produced. Looks like actually, you know, he's going the full, full complement of six and I'm almost wondering if this is going to hurt him just because, again, of the huge distances on this map. Dreamer now plopping down that cannon. 
I think, upon seeing those larvae being produced, it looks like that probe trying to get their way out of dodge. I like this play from Machine. He's actually building two Zerglings at the natural expansion to go ahead and get ahead of that probe so he can kill it. And you can see Dreamer was not expecting that, so ends up losing his probe scout. Overlord's now re kind of readjusting, going back towards, and Dreamer respecting the lack of vision and actually plopping down a second cannon because of this. Let's see if this probe is able to make its way back across. We do see another hatchery down, so now I'm getting a good look at what... So when I see Machine do it, I know... So apologies to Agistol, it looks like this is kind of the more common thing these days. Um, when I see Machine do it, I'm like, okay, this is this is common meta. Going ahead and getting that 9 o'clock hatchery up about halfway finished. Four drones on gas, and we'll see what, what he's going to do. He's got three drones on gas and pushing from there. I haven't been as... I need to, again, watch more been casting so many games in my free time and just kind of lounging playing Shovel Knight otherwise that I haven't uh, kept is on top of what the meta is at right now. I know 973 was a big thing and I don't think that is the current thing. Nice little blockade. So Dreamer not going to be able to go ahead and scout into the main. So this will be a good... I like this. This is going to be... Ooh, got a huge raid from Jorbs. Big raid from Jorbs actually as I'm casting this live. 1015. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Welcome to Starcraft Brood War. Dreamer has that cybernetic score warping in the background. He is going to need that Corsair. And just looking at the just the sheer size of this map, he is going to need that Corsair to just cover a huge range and be able to get that scouting information in. It's going to be absolutely critical. Assimilator at the natural expansion as well as the main. So I almost wonder if we're going to see Sarah Reaver as a result of this. Because usually when you see that second Assimilator, what that indicates is heavier tech. Heavier tech in the mid game, and I'm I'm almost wondering if we're going to see yeah that robotics facility even before we see anything else uh, out in the field. A little bit of a Sim City here from Machine. He's got that hatchery out in front as well as that evolution chamber, which suggests he's actually going to play a little bit more passively. I don't think he has three drones in this gas, so going a little bit drone light or going a little bit gas light. Nine o'clock base. He's also got so yeah he's going straight to five hatcheries. I think he is expecting some sort of Corsair-ish play. Because usually that is a typical response. So I think, yeah, diving into perhaps... I haven't seen game one, game two of this. But I think he is also expecting more of the airplay. Weapons one is being upgraded. We do see a Citadel of Dune, so I maybe take that back. It's also possible we're going to see as a little bit more High Templar heavy thing in the mid game. Probe Scout running back to the base. Machine finally getting a Hydralist down. It's going to be a little bit late for this Corsair that's getting out there, so he's probably going to end up losing at least this Overlord. He does have a Spore Colony protecting this main, and you can see he's already positioning for some sort of Sarah DT opener, and this is almost... yeah, we'll see. Another gateway moving down. This is the thing with, like, Lark... I do feel like the more mobile on this map, the more mobile the attack force, the better. Just because of the large distances that I'm seeing. I'm almost wondering if that drone's intentionally left there as a blockade. Now it's starting to move out to that secondary gas. Machine popping up gas. He's got that lair on the way. Corsair, and wow. Yeah, you can just... Uh, getting another hatchery. You can see how long it took that Corsair. And the second Corsair. Just to get to that 9 o'clock position after doing a little bit of hunting on that map. Corsair should be able to get... Yeah, probably going to get at least two kills on those overlords. Which is just going to set Machine back. He's been able to drone pretty heavily. Without a lot of disruption. Ash is setting up for what looks like... Kind of that 6 cell at around 7 minute 30 second plus 1 weapons attack. He's plopping down some more gateways. It does not look like he's actually going to Reavers. He is sticking more to the DT. So he's actually going old school Bisu build here. Getting that Zelt leg speed. And I'm almost wondering if he is going to have to transition though eventually to something like Sarah Reavery. Maybe even get Arbiters on this map. We'll see. Zealot should be moving across the map. But again, because of the huge distances... I expect Machine to be well prepared for this. He's got a bunch of Hydralis being produced. This is a very nice SimCity, which is going to funnel all of those Zealots right across that choke. And you've got these Hydralis that are just going to be able to pound on them while that's happening. This is the more exposed expansion. Hydralis speed is going to be in range. The Zealot's now moving out with a civilian randomly in the map. I like that in Terraform. you got the, the civilian hanging out. Map is Terraform, by the way. For people just joining us. We do have High Templar in a defensive position. Actually already going to weapons 2. Right off the bat. And additional gateways being plopped down. Psy Storm being developed. And it looks like, yeah. Dreamer is planning on going for a much more ground-based army. 
zealots wandering in. Hydralisks are right there to greet it, and this is just going to get absolutely squelched. Machine even has that sunken colony warping in. You would think he had just played this map a billion times, because that was timed perfectly. Perfect timing. Dark Templar actually flooding his way back out. A machine sitting at 35 drones. After that, and with this sizable Hydralisk force, Dreamer actually has to worry a little bit about a contain. Overlord Speed is upgrading for Machine. So he's going to be able to move out and negate those Dark Templar a bit. Range is upgrading. He's going to have map control momentarily. Let's see if he opts to go for either a contain or if he's going to go ahead and opt to play a little bit more passively and take additional bases out in the field. Additional gateways being plopped down for Dreamer. A couple units. He's actually getting Dragoon range as well because they think he's realizing that this is going to be the... I think he's expecting Lurkers in the mid-game. DT's getting a couple Zergling kills for free here in the middle of the map. Overlord out of position to deal with it. I don't think that's that big a loss for a machine. And honestly, with this sizable f a force, Dreamer is going to have to worry about just getting wiped out. Machine hunting, just kind of checking to see if there's an army across this field. I like kind of the angle he's taking to make sure he's not losing any high ground advantage. Two Dragoons in position. This is just a handful of Zealots, and this is a very scary army. Machine actually backing off a little bit, though. He's happy to have map control. DT sneaking into the 9 o'clock base. So being delayed a little bit while he's taking care of that. But Machine just pumping a huge amount of Hydralisks. He's already got two control groups of attack force right here. Now the question is, is th but this is a lot of Psy Storm. This could be a critical moment. Is whether Machine is able to dance out of the Psy Storm or if a lot of this army gets obliterated in the mid game. A little bit out of position. Still sweeping around. He's just trying to check for additional bases that Dreamer might be trying to take. Dreamer is positioning up to this mineral only to perhaps take that base. Machine fanning out. And you can just see Machine Styles a little bit more, again, on that passive side. He's happy to have this army to respond to anything that Dreamer's tossing out at him, but he wants to go for aggression in the form of just pure economy. Unfortunately, a little bit late. Now that Zergling sneaking in, Machine was hoping to, I think, to deny that base. Running in, but getting engaged. Oh, this is unfortunate. Piecemeal army. Zealots right on top of the Hydralisks. Dreamer regathering. Good size storm on top of some overlords as well. Those Corsairs actually might be able to take that down. A couple Zerglings sneaking in, but can clean up by Zealots. And Machine, unfortunately, seeing that base was just slightly out of position and engaged right into Dreamer's army that was well positioned to engage it, having to back off. And I think he realizes that his overlords are at risk of dying, and if he loses these overlords, any VTs that might be in the field might be able to wipe this army off. So he's going to go ahead and back up. He's also getting supply capped right there. So regathering to the defensive position with these overlords. Dreamer taking this opportunity to go ahead and push forward. Re-engaging. A huge amount of Zalts right there in position. Great storm on top of those Hydralists that were pinned down, and Machine again trying to back up on top of those lurkers, second lurker not able to burrow, a couple on that corner able to burrow, and now Dreamer overextending a little bit. Good storm on top of those lurkers. Machine has more reinforcements moving in, but this is a sizable army. Wiping out, and these storms are just obliterating the standing Hydralisk count. Dreamer engaging this perfectly, Observer sneaking up that lurker, doing a little bit more damage than it probably needed to, and it looks like he is gonna be able to, to dive into this mineral only, wipe this out. A lot of Dragoons still standing and still some Zealots to deal with any potential Zerglings that might push up. Machine in a bit of trouble here. Has the economy to build an army. Sneaking in, trying to pick off those High Templar, but those High Templar just getting the last bit of storm. And beautiful storms taking out what looked like about eight Hydralisks right there. Now that 9 o'clock base in a bit of risk as well. Dragoons peeling in. You can see that level 2 weapons, level 1 armor upgrade really paying off versus the level 1 level... Uh, one carapace and weapons moving in. It looks like he's going to back off. This is a, a small choke to be funneled into. Hydralis might be able to clean this up. Another I Templar moving in. It has another storm available. And Dreamer forcing a lot of drones to be spent on armies. And Machine just has had an extreme difficulty engaging. First of all, you just you can see he's a little bit bewildered by this map, I think. Good storms, not catching much, mostly catching lurker eggs. It looks like morphing in, but this hatchery looks like it is certainly going to get taken out if it just gets focus fired. A couple zealots in that natural expansion, trying to get a couple kills. Lurkers just finally burrowing. There's still Dragoon standing, which can t easily take out everything that's standing here. Machine's going to have to reinforce from that 9 o'clock position, I think, to deal with this. Spore colony gone as well. If there's a DT anywhere nearby, Machine's in a lot of trouble. 
More Psystorm Storm on top of a moving Hydralisk and the Lurkers. The machine is under full breach. Drones now dying. I think this is going to be GG in a moment here. More Dragoons pushing in, and Dreamer is just engaging perfectly. Finally, the reinforcements coming from that 9 o'clock base. More reinforcements peeling down. He might be able to save this natural expansion, but not before Dreamer is able to go ahead and take that 3 o'clock expansion. It's warping in an excess there. And do significant damage to Machine's drone count. Archon being morphed in. And Dreamer going ahead and pulling back. If you take a look at the supply counts now, we have 94 to 80, which is not where you want to be. Machine losing is critically losing some of those hatcheries and has really been scattered. His engagement, usually this is Machine's strong point, is being able to use large army compositions to engage in the mid-game and really swarm his opponent and sneak around. But maybe the unfamiliar the unfamiliarity with this map, maybe just Dreamer realizing Machine's timing, able to just punish. And the storms have been brutal. Absolutely beautiful from Dreamer. High Templar getting exposed a little bit there. Probably going to get picked off by these Zerglings. Turning around. <laughs> wow! Able to sneak back around. Trying to be bait for this corner, actually, to try to protect this natural and allow the rest of his army to get in position. Dreamer getting boxed out a bit by his Nexus on this positioning. Observer's taken down. That's going to allow these Lurkers to move in. Perhaps take this base down. That Photon Cannon's warping in. Machine's going to have to get a move on to keep that cannon from warping in. Overlord down. He's not going to be able to pick off any more reinforcing observers as well. And there is one moving up. Good size storm. Although catching a couple of his units. Taking out the, the close lurker. The photon cannon is up. The zealots moving in. This is a nice funnel location for Machine though to take out a lot of those zealots. Those zealots are very, very soft. Reinforcing. He really wants to take out this expansion. Because if he can stop this expansion, he might be able to regain an economic advantage. Still a lurker standing from the low ground. Looks like it can attack from that low ground. I think Machine's just going to try to focus fire this Nexus down and is just rapidly able to have, yeah, rapidly able to take that out before backing off. He can go ahead and lose these units now. And I like what he's doing. He's realizing, okay, I can attack across this low ground. Let me go ahead and leave that. Picking up the Observer, which is going to make that lurker even more annoying. Especially if he tries to move a probe up. He doesn't have vision to go ahead and attack that probe. Machine now, this is now we're seeing Machine in his better form. He's a smaller army, I think, than Dreamer. To really work with, but Dreamer's trying to cover more territory. Good storm across the Hydralis once again before he's able to engage. Lurker burrowing, whiffing on that second one. Nice movement from Machine, dodging those Hydralis out of the storm this time, engaging on top of the Zealots, and now he's getting the better part of this fight, able to dodge once again, pick off that High Templar. I think he's happy to lose these units, honestly, while he goes ahead and moves out and gets a little bit of map control. Still behind the overall supply count. He's had his Zergling patrolling up there to try to deny it. That Nexus warping back in, but he's in, got another group of Hydralisks moving in to go ahead and pick this off. And Lurker from the low ground once again able to spot it. Picking off that probe is going to try to work on it. I don't think he has enough Hydralisks to get it done. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and back off. Critically, though, for Machine, his main still mining, his natural is still mining. He's got a good amount of drones right there, but he's not expanded to an additional base. He's mostly been focused on trying to keep this 9 from producing. Or, sorry, this 3 o'clock base from producing. And Dreamer getting a larger and larger army count to engage against this. Lurker finally taken out on the low ground. Hydralis is going to get clean up fairly easily. <clears throat> In the main, Dreamer starting to look a bit thin. Natural expansion is looking a bit thin. He does, he's got four bases though. Still working against Machines 3. Or, sorry, a machine up to four. Just realized this is not his natural expansion. So he's got that 6 o'clock base. But overall, Machine has, while well, he's desperately been trying to take out that 3, looks like that's finally going to get established for Dreamer. While that's been happening, Dreamer has been staying on top of his macro management. He's at 154 supply, practically double Machine. So Machine's going to have to get a move on and in a hurry, which he's very capable of doing. But otherwise, he's going to get run over by a gigantic army. You can see it's starting to gather on the minimap. A couple units getting killed out there on the map. Machine getting a little bit greedy with this hatchery that I don't think he can defend. Level 3 weapons, level 2 armor, by the way. Versus just level 1 weapons, level 1 armor, which is not the situation you want to be in when you're going up against a superior force. Archon moving down. Observers finally in the field. Archon on top of those lurker zealots. Eating a lot of free damage. It looks like that's going to cause them to back up. They're going to wait 
to regather with this, the rest of this army. That's going to allow the lurkers to move in. So critically, for Machine to come ahead in this engagement, he really needs to focus on those observers overhead and be able to pick them off. Actually, I think he already did. I missed it. Moved up the Hydralisks. The observers got a little bit out of position and already wiped out. So buying himself some time to resupply his forces. Look for a little bit of a... We'll wait for the observer to float across the map. <laughs> Supply cap, actually, for Dreamer, which is also hurting him right here. And getting that observer out in, the first, uh, out in the field. He's wandering around looking to see if Machine has taken any additional expansion, sweeping out to the left. The Machine, really, with that observer snipe, saved his own life. Because, honestly, I think with everything that Dreamer has out here, he would have just run him over. He's well behind on supplies. He's behind in upgrades. This is giving him... But here's the thing, Machine's economy is much stronger. That main's mined out, that natural expansion's now main, mined out. So this is two base versus basically five base Zerg, although this base is not yet mining. Might want to see a transfer from the main. Queen's Nest dropping down, so you're probably going to see a shift to Hive Tech in not too long, but Machine needs to get more significant ground army to deal with this. Dreamer refusing to expand. He's max supply. Moving some, it looks like he's finally moving a Dragoon into this upper left-hand corner to kind of stake claim. And look what's going on up there. A gigantic death ball moving across the middle of the map. Let's see if he does a better job protecting the observers this time. Machine does have a good amount of Zerglings nearby to engage. Unfortunately, I don't know if his Lurker line is going to be in position to cope with this. He didn't he critically didn't have vision of this coming in. Dreamer taking a few free shots. Overlord looking for any observers. Not quite able to snipe. And look at those Hydralisks melt. Zealots on top of there. Good size storm cleaning up the Zerglings that are trying to sweep around and catch something. The Observer's right on top of this Lurker group. Good size storm. Dreamer also being very careful not to storm his own Observer. And he's just walking through. This is like hot knife through butter right here. Beautiful size storm on these Lurkers that were not yet burrowed as well. This That is a textbook engagement for a Protoss on top of a Zerg. Just walking through, the, Zer the Zealots cleaning out everything in front, the Dragoons sweeping back around and cleaning up the Lurkers. And now this Mineral only getting swept out. Definitely these two Hatcheries are going to just die. And honestly, I think Machine might need to GG because Dreamer should be able to sweep all the way across. And if not basically seal Machine in, wipe out a lot of tech at his main. High Templar with still full energy might be able to get some storms across that mineral line. Not quite in position to do so. Those two hatcheries have been taken out. Dreamer also expanding the 1 o'clock location. Yeah, Machine has to GG there. It was just overwhelming. Overwhelming attack force. Yeah, not a lot of chokes to work with. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll do one more match on... Uh, yeah, I got a SimCity, your own chokes. GG. We'll move on to one more match on this map terraform and then we will switch to Aukzerg versus actually need to DeWalt I think actually maybe we'll go back and forth hey Varosh good to see you wow more people to be cozy and chat with thank you for the raid jorbs very much appreciate it